Hi everybody, this is Nafish. Today we are going to work on amplitude modulation. So first of all, we have to import NumPy as NP and then import matplotlib.pyplot as PLT. So this is for plotting purpose and NumPy is for numeric calculations. Okay. So let's define uh, two things. One is the message signal. So let's say message signal um, is nothing but we have a amplitude and then we, um, we have a sine wave and then two times pi times f times t i think we are very much familiar with this uh, uh, with this sort of signal right so amplitude uh, we have to define it and also we have to define the frequency and time okay so let's say am uh, is nothing but uh, two volts okay and fm is uh, let's say 10 hertz okay and then uh, we, we need to have a carrier signal okay so usually the carrier signals those are like higher in frequency okay and the amplitude is also different so let's say ac um, is 3 and fc is um, 50 okay so then we need to have the mo the modulation signal okay so the module modulated output we are going to get is mod signal is nothing but we need to have this um Oh, I need to rename this. Okay, so carrier signal. So the equation is we have to have this carrier signal and then uh, plus um, there is a thing called modulation index, which I'm going to come later. That's going to be multiplied with the message signal. Okay, so this guy right here and then the message signal that's going to be multiplied with the carrier signal. Okay, so this is the equation. Let's go over it again. Uh, modulated signal is carrier signal plus M, which is nothing but the ratio of uh, this amp AM and then AC. Okay, so what is AM? AM is the amplitude of the message signal, right? So this is the highest amplitude of the message signal, and this is from the carrier signal, and this is the ratio. So M is the modulation index is nothing but the ratio of AM and SAC, okay? And this got some impact in the output. Uh, uh, for now, I will just say, like, um, we should target uh, a value uh, less or um, equal to one, okay? So one is the best performance of signal to ratio, um, noise ratio. Um, you're going to get but usually it's little less than one uh, but if it is going to go over the one then over one then um, there will be some issues in the output which we'll discuss later in this um, discussion okay so we have the message signal we have the carrier signal and we have the uh, modulated signal okay so we have defined all these three and now we, we need to have one thing is not defined that is a time right so time let's say uh, np dot a range and then start time is zero stop time time is one so it's the signal is going to run from zero seconds to one seconds and um, then we need to have delta t so delta t is nothing but the sampling interval so uh, you need to collect samples right from the signal and this is like the rate of uh, collecting the samples so sampling rate okay and this is nothing but delta t is nothing but one over the sampling frequency. I think we are kind of very much familiar with the sampling frequency. Okay, and sampling frequency, you know, from the Nyquist theorem, that needs to be double, more than double of this FC. But uh, for here, I will just say like, let's say it's uh, 150, okay, 150 Hertz. And also um, sampling frequency is nothing but samples per second, I guess, right? So how many samples we have in the signal? We have, n is equals to 150 samples. This is also kind of I wanted to define. So everything is defined and now I think we can, we are ready to plot this signal. Okay, so let's run it. Uh, first cell, run it, run it, run it, run it. There is, I think there is one issue right here. Oh, okay, so this sign function, I have to write np in front of it because it is, we are uh, getting it from the NumPy library, right? Also for pi, so np.py, then here again, np.sign, then np.py and then I think then we should be good okay so we run it and then let's plot all these three signals okay so we need to do a subplotting here okay so plt dot plot and then uh, we have t so time, time is the x-axis then we have the mass signal right so this is the mass signal but let's have plt dot subplot and then 
we're going to have three rows one columns and this is the first element we're going to plot in and then we're going to do some copy and paste okay so copy paste here copy paste here so the second one right here is the carrier signal we wanted to plot right so carrier signal and the element is the second element and then the third one right here is the modulated output which is the mod signal okay and let's have a color coding for this as well so this is red and uh, let's say this is green and also we need to have a figure size so plt dot figure oops plt dot figure right here and then fix size it's going to be triple so let's say 16 and 8 okay we should be all good now so let's run it so we have three signals right here okay so x-axis is the time domain and y-axis is the amplitude okay so remember for the first message signal we had an amplitude of two and for carrier we had amplitude of three okay so this is two right here and this the amplitude is three here and then when you do the modulation you see the amplitude is kind of getting changed over time so one time it's going at five maybe a little over then it's coming down here then going up and going down there is a there is a kind of a periodic um, change in the amplitude here okay so this is the amplitude modulation i wanted to show but you know we should also look into the a50 domain you know how the signal is looks like in the a50 domain so for that uh, we can do an a50 on this modulated signal okay that's going to be very fast so let's say we have the variable mod signal right uh, let's add a50 end of it and then we need to uh, get the a50 function from numpy library so np dot a50 if you press that and then a50 again okay and then um, you just call this mod signal okay so this is going to give you the a50 of this modulated um, signal okay so let's run this guy and also for um for frequency let's say freak is nothing but np dot a50 dot a50 freak i think okay so this is going to give you the x-axis okay so this is right now in time domain but you can get the frequency parameters here as well so for that you just call the a50 freak and you have two inputs here one is the number of samples which you know already and and also the other one is the delta t the sampling rate okay so you, if you run this then it should be good now one thing we have to do before we go move further just look into the freak parameter okay the frequencies we we we, we are getting uh, so you see the sampling frequency is 150 so it should be a minus 150 to plus 150 okay so run it sorry it should be uh 75 to uh 75 minus 75 to plus 75 however you see the order we are starting from zero and we go up to 74 then there is a flip like completely opposite direction minus 75 and then minus one so we just need to reorder these frequencies okay and for that what we need to do is um we need to sort the arguments okay there is a function i'm just going to show you now so frick sorted is np dot arg np dot i think arg sort and then the frick okay so this is going to sort out the arguments okay so let's run this and then we have to have this freak now all the indexes are sorted out okay so what we'll do is freak is we're going to assign it again so basically now everything is sorted out okay so if you run this then the frequencies will be sorted out i'll just show you right now okay so freak you see now we have minus 75 to 74 okay so this these all are kind of from negative to positive there is no certain shift in the direction okay so i think we are good here so we are ready for plotting so let's do a plot so pld dot plot the x-axis is the frequency right so we have the x-axis and then the y-axis is right here the modulated uh, effect output but we have to do a couple of things here we have to take the absolute value first of all because there will be complex number f when you do the f50 right and then um you also need to uh, divide this by the number of samples okay to get the correct amplitude okay so these are the two things i think there is a third thing that is required because we sorted out the frequencies in a you know in this order from minus 75 to 74 so we also need to sort out the correct values in this order so for that you just pass the uh, argument fix sort okay 
So brick sorted. I think we should be good now. So let's run it. Uh, something is not defined. Let's find out what uh, PLD. Oh, I missed a T here. Hopefully this will work this time. Okay. So this is the amplitude modulation output. Okay. So you have a carrier at 50 and you get two side bands. One is the lower side band. One is the upper side band. So let me show it here side bands so remember we had a carrier of 50 right and our uh, modulation frequency or the message frequency was 10 so we'll get 50 plus 10 50 minus 10 so these are two side bands one is at 40 one is at 60 okay so this is how you can get um, the output so but one thing you can see the side bands are kind of down in amplitude with compared to these two okay so basically if you change the ratio here let's say if you go with two here so the ratio of the modulation is one and this is what we generally want to have the maximum modulation so let's if you run it you see it's kind of there is no loss and all these side bands are kind of up to this um, carrier okay now we can do a couple of other things we we, we can just convert it into logarithmic scale because i just wanted to show the impact of the noise on it okay so for that we can ju just do 10 times log 10 of this whole thing and i think i have to get nv here and p log 10 and then if we run it let's see something is wrong here uh i'm missing a bracket i guess right here okay okay so now you see uh we, we got in logarithmic scale and the peaks are down let's say 140 db okay from the noise so the noise load is down 140 db okay now if we add noise to this modulated wave right here so let's say np dot random dot normal and then we have let's say zero min gosh adding gaussian noise okay zero min 0 0.5 let's say 0 0.5 is the standard deviation and then we have the sample sizes and okay let's run it and see the impact of the noise okay so after adding noise here let's run it run it run it and now you see just uh this is kind of from 120 db this is what we are getting here like the peaks are kind of uh, the, from the peak to the noise there is only 15 db clearance okay you see this okay so it is kind of very much impacted by the by the noise of the signal okay so if you add some environmental noise the signal is going to get corrupted very fast you see like right here you add noise and this is kind of from 120 db clearance or 140 db this is now 15 db or something okay so you can play with this and uh, hopefully you have learned something from this video take care